Let's just start out, how does sonar even work? And it's pretty simple, I'll try to explain it. Sonar sends down the signal, obviously through its transducer. It shoots it down to the bottom. When it hits bottom, it returns back up and shows bottom. If it hits a target, say for instance a suspended fish, let's just say that's a suspended fish. Sonar will come down, it's designed to hit off the fish's swim bladder and reflect back up. The bigger the fish, the bigger the swim bladder, so the bigger the return. The smaller fish, obviously smaller swim bladder, and you can differentiate. That's where you get your target separation from. You'll have bait fish and predator fish. So what happens is, sonar now sends down that signal, hits the swim bladder, shoots back up, there's just, yeah, here is your suspended return. All right, how does chirp work? Chirp will send down multiple frequencies down in one signal. All right, and we're going to explain that. We're going to explain that in a second about the do re mi fa so la ti do theory. Okay. What? I know. I know what you're thinking, but that's it's going to make sense in a second. All right. So that's basically how sonar works. All right. It sends down a signal. It hits the swim bladder of a fish and returns the signal back up to the machine, and it returns on your machine. Obviously, when you have multiple fish. You're gonna have multiple swim bladders and, and you'll have multiple returns, okay? So that's that's basically how sonar works. Okay, back in the prehistoric age, we used to have transducers that were capable of putting out 200 kilohertz or 50 kilohertz, or other ones that have 83 kilohertz and 200 kilohertz. I'll go briefly through what that means. 200 kilohertz traditionally was used back in the day, back in the day, people use them this day because they haven't gotten on the chirp, chirp train yet. But back in the day, I said it again back in the day. Hmm. This day, right now, there's a person out in the ocean that has a 200 or 50 kilohertz, it's dual transducer. It has either 200 kilohertz or it has 50 kilohertz. If they're out deep in the ocean and that's over 300 feet, they're probably utilizing the 50 kilohertz portion of that transducer. Or if they come in shore and they go less than 300 feet, they're probably using the 200 kilohertz portion of that. All right, the easiest way I can explain this is, is how it was explained to me from Simrad. You have chirp, sends down multiple frequencies down in one signal, and then you have a single frequency sonar like the 200 slash 50 kilohertz transducer. Has the ability to do 200 kilohertz at one time or 50 kilohertz at one time. 200 is for shallow water, 50 is for deeper water, okay? What chirp does, again, now just picture that, the 200 kilohertz signal going down as the signal do in do re mi fa sol la ti do right so do 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 goes down do goes down hits a fish comes back up do goes back down hits another fish comes back up what chirp does now chirp sends down multiple frequencies down in one signal so you picture this now do re mi fa sol la ti do is going down boom 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 do hits a fish comes up re hits a fish comes back up me it's a fish comes back up, fa la ti do, whatever heck. You get the point here. These multiple frequencies going down, hitting fish and coming back up. So you have multiple returns, and then this is where you get your target separation. I wanna show you this picture right here real quick. This is a picture of me out the other day. I was out uh, just scoping around, still early out where I am up in Smithtown Bay up in the Northeast. And uh, it's a pot of bunker, not being active, it's just hanging out. But if you look up on the left of this pot of bunker, you see that the pot's just a little thicker, it's, uh, it's, it's a little wider, and you can see the target separation really nice. You can almost see them count the bunker in that pot. All right, on the right-hand side, the bunker pot is just a little tighter, and bunker is Manhattan up here. Uh, the bunker pot is just a little tighter, and you can see that the return is more of a solid return. But when those fish now, spread out a little bit that's where you get your target separation from the chirp all right now for instance if there was fish on top of that they'll bass below it or if there were uh, bluefish in that pod being active on it you'd easily see the long walk of that fish in that pod so you'd know that there's uh, this is a pod you might want to work all right even though it's not showing signs of being worked yet 
All right, let's go to a spot here. Real-time video that I took out in Montauk of the same exact scenario I was just talking about in that last picture, right? Handheld, horrendous. You make a seasick watching the video, but to explain exactly what I was talking about, how you have that pot of bait, and then you're gonna have the fish hawks all around it. Pay particular attention to the two bass that are on the bottom of that school of bait, all right? Check it out. It's tough, you may need a drama meme, but it gets my point across. Let's get back to high chirp now, all right? High chirp is the most used frequency in the chirp family, and there's a couple of reasons for it. Not only does it give you the most high definition return, it also lets you fish within the lowest portion of the column. In other words, high chirp is where you'd fish in 600 feet or less. And that right there, that little market right there is predominantly a lot of the fishermen out there, okay? Myself in particular. I max out at probably 100 feet when I fish. Uh, and that's year round. I don't go anything north of 100 feet. So that's, that, that comes into play with a lot of people. A lot of people fish the ocean, but they're not really exceeding the 600 feet portion of the ocean, like the tuna fish fishermen. And those guys right there would be using the low chirp setting. And that's 600 feet or more, okay? Still high definition, bottom bottom lock, you get all that stuff with the, with the low chirp. But high definition, bang for the buck, that's what you're looking at. And I use medium chirp, which is great for me. I don't need anything other than that. It's, uh, it, it really does what I need. It gives me that target separation when I'm out there actively fishing pods of bait and pods of bunker. I can tell if there are predator fish on those pods, like that picture I showed earlier. If they're not there, you move on, you go to the next one. If you do not see fish holding on those active pods, forget about it, move on. Save your time and some aggravation out there, right? Hope you guys enjoyed this little piece of footage I put together. I hope it explains Simrad's chirp just a little bit. Again, it's real simple. You have the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do theory here. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do is going down to one signal as opposed to the do signal coming down from the single, single frequency transducer. Obviously, I don't need to uh, be a mathematician here to show that there are multiple signals hitting different fish. The returns are clearer. Target separation is a hundred times better. And uh, it gives you the ability, to, as a novice, to look at your screen and say, holy mackerel, that is a pot of bait, and I can clearly see predator fish on that bait. Once you're able to start doing that, your catch ratio is gonna go up. You're gonna spend a lot more time actively fishing active fish, and uh, that's what it's all about, okay? So welcome to the 21st century and chirp. Take care, thanks for watching Kiko Cheeks Outdoors. Take a peek at a couple of our shenanigans videos here. We have fun out there, so I hope you guys have a laugh or two. And don't take us too seriously, all right? We fish with the best stuff out there, but we mess around, we have fun, all right? Share these. thanks for watching.